What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John Please here and today I'm going to be going over how you can catch shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. <laughs> Big disclaimer, if you have only played Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee and that is your only experience with encountering shiny Pokemon, I have bad news for you. If you played any game before that and that's your experience with encountering shiny Pokemon, not much has changed. If you don't know what a shiny Pokemon is, here's a six second explanation. Shiny Pokemon offer no advantage whatsoever to the Pokemon's stats, nature's abilities, or anything except that it is a slightly different color and it has an animation when it begins. I do want to start this video off with saying that Pokemon Sword and Shield introduced max raid battles and some people believe that these Pokemon have an increased shiny spawn rate. I have no evidence supporting or contrasting this. However, the first day that I played this game for the Australian release, I found my first shiny Pokemon. It was a shiny Hoodoo. I've not found any shiny Pokemon in a raid since then and I have done quite a lot. First, a disclaimer, your starter Pokemon is shiny locked. It cannot be shiny. You get a gift type null later in the game. He is also shiny locked. The gift Gigantamax, Pikachu, and Eevee are shiny locked. The only way to get shiny starter Pokemon is to breed them, which I'll be covering in this video. I guess the first place to start is there are two ways to encounter shiny Pokemon in this game, breeding and wild encounters and both of them are going to be affected by the shiny charm. If you make your way to Sir Chester, which is right here, this is where the ice or rock, whatever swords gem is, it's the big frozen town. You're gonna to come to the big hot spring fountain right in the middle, and there are two hotels on the left and the right. We're going to go into the left hotel. In here, go to the elevator, and we are going to go all the way to the left end of the hallway into this door. Here, we're going to be speaking to this guy who is a nurse or something. This is the director of the game. The first time you speak with him, you're going to be getting an item called the Catching Charm. What that does is that increases the rate of critical captures and makes Pokemon slightly easier to catch. However, if you have completed your Pokedex and you have 400 out of 400 Pokemon, which I have only been able to achieve this by playing diligently every single day since the game has released, help from people online, trading with myself, doing multiple playthroughs at the same time. Only with that, I am able to achieve having 400 out of 400 Pokemon. And if you are at that point, you can then speak to him and he says, uh, amazing. You actually completed your Pokedex. Congratulations. This is truly an amazing feat. You deserve a special certificate to commemorate this champion achievement. And boom, there's my certificate to League Trainer Austin John. We hereby certify your achievement for completing the Pokedex. May this great accomplishment be celebrated by all, and all will bask in the glory of my accomplishment. And, boom, Shiny Charm. Shiny Charm is said to increase the chance of finding a shiny Pokemon in the wild. It's also worth mentioning that the left door right here is Morimoto. If you defeat Morimoto, you get the Oval Charm. The Oval Charm makes it so that you get eggs more often when at the breeder. So if you're going to be breeding for shiny Pokemon, he is definitely a person you want to defeat in battle and then get his item. Let's get into the math. There are two ways to get shiny Pokemon, breeding and wild encounters. First, we're going over breeding because it's much more simple. If you make your way to either of the breeder locations, I always recommend the one in the wild area and doing my trick to hatching Pokemon easily. If you were to just throw in any two random Pokemon, there is a one out of 4,096 chance for that Pokemon to be shiny. That's called full odds. Once you have the shiny charm, that number gets cut into a third, and you have a 1 out of 1,365 chance of finding a shiny Pokemon. Which, if you don't think that's a lot, that means that if you fill up every single one of your Pokemon boxes, that's only 960. That is still not a one-to-one -one ratio for you finding a shiny. This game does allow what's known as the Masuda method. What that means is if you were to drop a Pokemon and a complementing Pokemon of the same egg group, however, that Pokemon originates from a game of a different region in a different language, the Masuda method increases your chances of breeding a shiny Pokemon from one in 4,096 down to one out of 682. And with the shiny charm, that even goes down even more to one out of 512, which is much more reasonable of a number. That is actually your best chance to breed a shiny Pokemon, having a ditto from a different region in a different language and your Pokemon with the shiny charm. 
you'll probably not be doing this week one. Now, let's get into shiny hunting. This is probably why you're watching this video. And it's a little complicated, so I'm gonna break this down piece by piece. Shiny hunting in this game combines portions of the deck snav mechanics in older games and let's go mechanics. Meaning that this is going to be part based on the number of Pokemon that you've battled and part based on the amount of Pokemon you have in a catch combo. These both require further explanation. First, the number of Pokemon battled. So let's head over here into the grass and let's encounter this throw. I mean, Sock. I specifically chose a Pokemon that I have never encountered in a battle yet. You're gonna see here, number battled is one. Since I've never seen this Pokemon before, the chance of that encounter being shiny is a full odds out of one out of 4,096. Now, since I encountered it and then I either defeated it or I caught it, it does increase my number battled to one. If I were to run away from the battle, that will not increase and it will remain at zero. That is how the number of a battled is affected. Since I've now encountered one sock, my chance of finding another one in the wild shiny has actually doubled to one out of 2,048. However, that number does not increase for a while more. I have to battle 50 of the same Pokemon for that number to increase again, and then it increases to one out of 1,365. After battling 100 of the same Pokemon, it increases to one out of 1,024. After battling 300 of the same Pokemon, it increases to one out of 682. And after battling 500 of the same Pokemon, it increases to one out of 585. Now, adding the shiny charm into the equation of all of these numbers increases the chance by anywhere from 50% to as low as 22%. But you'll know if you have the shiny charm when you decide to start shiny hunting in the first place. Now, onto the catch combo. The game is still very early of being out, and with all the data mining and all the research done of the game so far, there are still a lot of unanswered questions as far as what constitutes as a catch combo. Unlike Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee that literally had it displayed on screen, in this game, it's a hidden mechanic. Have I been saying catch combo? I mean battled combo. Sorry, catch combos from Let's Go, this is battled combo. The things that we do not know if they do affect a battle combo are if you encounter a Pokemon of a different species, if you battle or catch a Pokemon of a different species, if you leave that single patch of grass slash encounter table, if you leave the root or section of the wild area that you are currently in, if you leave the area and enter Pokemon Center to buy Pokeballs. We do not know if this affects your catch combo. General rule of thumb, to be as safe as possible, you want to have a team of six Pokemon, all of their moves with very high PP, they're very high level, you're on a low route, and you're able to just encounter the same Pokemon over and over and over. If you want to be on Route 1, and you're encountering Rookity, and you just go in the circle over and over and over, that's probably your safest bet without encountering any of the other Pokemon and avoiding all of the exclamation mark Pokemon. I know, it sounds complicated. Shiny hunting is not easy and it's not fun. Now what the encounter combo does for this game is it gives you a chance at a reroll for a shiny. So all the numbers that I said before, let's get those back on screen. All of these numbers that I said before are not affected. That's the actual percent, that's the actual fraction rate of you finding that shiny Pokemon. However, if you have a battle combo of zero to two, there's a very slight chance of a reroll, about 2%. And the more of that Pokemon that you encounter in that battle combo, the more that increases. After 25 of encountering the same Pokemon, there is a minimum of a 32% chance at a reroll. What that means is if you're on Route 1, you have the shiny charm, and you battled 51 Rookity in total, there's a one out of 819 chance that you are going to find a shiny Rookity. But if you've defeated or caught 25 of those Rookity in a row, with having a total of 51 Rookity defeated, there is a 33% chance that you're going to have another reroll at that one out of 895 again. Now, while a reroll does not compound your percent of a chance to find one, it does give you two chances to find it. Meaning that getting a reroll doesn't mean that you have one out of 400. No, it means you have one out of 800. If it fails, one out of 800. So just a disclaimer, shiny hunting is very complicated as far as how the mechanics work. If you have the shiny charm, I recommend doing the shiny charm. Fill up your Pokedex, then start your shiny hunting. Because otherwise you're gonna spend 
way more time hunting one Pokemon than you would getting every single Pokemon in the game. But you can get every Pokemon in the game. Just go around, battle every single trainer, spoof your weather, do a whole bunch of max raid battles, and if you have the game now, by the time it's Christmas, you'll probably have your Pokedex complete, and then you can start shiny hunting. Well guys, I hope this extremely complicated explanation of how shiny hunting in Pokemon Sword and Shield was easy to understand. I try. This is my third time recording the video, trying to make it as simple of a breakdown as I possibly could. If you found this video helpful or informative, do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.